there's other jars you could donate to that too. I think the preferred team to donate to is jar number four, someone said. Jar number four. That's what I heard. Number two. Four. Two, four. four. I thought number one number was the best. Oh, well. So we can't advise you, just use your good judgment. <laughs> well, I, I think it should be mentioned, and they're going to need to talk about it. If it goes over $600, everyone has to get done. Right.
they're, they're, God is with you on That's every right. one of them. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. So Kim and Christy wanted to come up to do a little announcement. And also, guys, if you really do want some help downloading the app or have to use this, just let me know and I'll help you. chapter yes. just kind of give us a little bit more of a firm foundation to stand on. Yes. Now, what we have been talking about, we go through and we actually just kind of let the youth tell those things that are on their hearts. And one of the things that's been on their hearts was relationships. So we had talked about bad relationships, such as Samson and Delilah, and use different examples from that. And we had talked about good relationships, using Isaac and Rebecca, and different examples from that. We're going to talk a little bit more about physical relationships this week and sex and what the Bible has to say about that. Now, usually, and purity and what the Bible has to say about that, what the scripture. Usually we have some kind of fun activity to do and they know that we're just a little bit ornery. So last week, whenever I had two rolls of duct tape sitting there on the table, they really wondered what that was all about. They kind of got to see what type of youth group activity. Now, you'll have to go look on the board back there and see what that was all about yourself. We put new pictures out of the youth group every month, like yeah. the beginning of the yeah. month. So there's new pictures out there on the board today. Okay. Yeah. Another thing that we're going to be doing coming up, Christy has actually gotten a hold of B Medical, and they've been gracious enough to allow us to have a tour of their facility for our youth group during our normal youth time. So that's going to be coming up either the week before the Harvest Day Day or the week after Okay. We haven't quite got that all scheduled out. Surprise, teens. We didn't announce that to you yet. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty well covers everything we got going with youth group. But if you got any questions, you know some teens that might be interested in coming, we'd love to talk to you. Yes. We'd just like to fellowship with them, learn about the Lord, talk about the others. Yes. And the teens are really excited to be the ones that raise the most money in their jar so they can gone. Yes? Yes? <laughs> Holy said so. So he said so. <laughs> that all being said, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to come to your house today. Lord, I thank you. I praise your holy name. We are able to meet together with such a wonderful heart and love for you, God. I pray that we leave anything that's not of you at the door, God, as we come here with you on our hearts, God, that you minister to us and that we bring you glory, God. I pray for those people that have illness in their life, or the enemy is fighting at them, or our bodies are decaying. Lord, you are a healing God. Heal their bodies. Heal their minds. It is by your stripes, Lord Jesus, that we are healed. And I claim that, all these people, that your spirit minister to their spirit, that your healing come to their bodies. Father God, I thank you for the tithes and offerings that have been poured into your storehouse, God. I pray that you bless the gift as well as the giver, tenfold and a hundredfold. Where you say to test it, Lord, we've come today. We do that in honor to you, Lord. Lord, I pray again that as we worship you, as we praise your name, that you be exalted. That the Holy Spirit, you move freely in this house. You are welcome here. We honor you. We bless you and we praise your name. And I ask these things in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 As praise 
team counts for you. I'd like to carry on our work. <laughs> now, the race team is coming out. I think the Ripples are doing an amazing job with our youth. They are doing an amazing job.
Miss Michelle, we're going to go to Oh How I Love Jesus in the key of G. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Yes. Here we go. Yes. There is a name. Yeah. 
And though we long for you, Jesus, we long for your return. We also know that you say, but I will tarry a bit longer, Lacey, because you have gathering to do. And church, we have gathering to do. Our collection is us. And though he tarries a little longer and it gets a little scarier, we do not ever have to fear. Because our mercy and our grace and forgiveness and love is in the Lord. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I
thank you, Lord, for it. We give you all the glory and all the praise. We love you, Lord. We exalt you. Someone needs to declare his glory. Someone needs to shout his praise. Shout to church. Let it go. Whatever you have, let it go right now. Let it go. Shout it. That's what worship is. Worship is not setting here. turning your scripture 
in two places. You ready? Ephesians 2, put your finger there, and then go to Acts 2. Okay? Ephesians 2 and Acts 2. Now, in Ephesians chapter 2, it says this, at the last of the scripture we were reading. Verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Hey, you are members of the household of God. Amen. Hey, let that soak in a little bit. You're not just members of the Glee Club or members of the FHA or whatever it may be for the letters. You are members of the household of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirits. Yes. Yes. Well, Tommy, do you have that video? Will it not work? That video is not going to work. Okay, that's great. Someday we may be able to show that video I have. That brings up what the church and the preconceived ideas of the church the church was in its infancy, actually in Acts 2, if you'll turn over to that. In Acts 2, verse 40 through 47, the church was in its infancy when the New Testament scriptures were written. Therefore, the only fundamental functions of the church would be recorded there in Acts 2. The fact that these functions were basic, however, like eating, breathing, and sleeping are to an infant, make them no less important as pertaining to the functions of the church. They are necessary so that the church, the body of Christ, might grow to maturity. Following Pentecost and the baptizing of believers that occurred at that time, the church grew quickly. Can you imagine to more than 3,000 souls in one day? Man, that's quite the revival, isn't it? Yeah. Would you be upset if we did that? No. I would, I would, hey, let's go out there and let's bring them in. Yes. There's yeah. room here for the 3,000. That's right. That's right. These early believers gathered in at least two venues to listen to the apostles' teaching in the courts of the temple and in homes. Mm -hmm. See, it's not like we think of today because they did not have the New Testament. No. They studied the Old Testament right. and it proclaimed the life of Christ of which they had witnessed. So they studied in their homes. The church got together, and they got together in the courthouse of the temple in Jerusalem. In both settings, the believers, under the apostles' direction and leadership, engaged in activities that strengthened them for accomplishing the great commission given by Jesus Christ. Yes. Right. Yes. I, I fear and dare say the church corporately has the majority has strayed away from their very principles of what it's intended to be. Right. Cool. I believe that it's more like one, when we think of church, when actually when we say we're going to church, well, you are the church. That's right. If yeah. no one came this morning, if no person came this morning, the church is not here. Right. That's right. Think about it. That's right. Well, I thought Lighthouse Church was the church. Mm -hmm. Lighthouse is only a church as pertaining to you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. If no one shows up, this is just a building. That's right. Right? That's right. That's right. So you are the church. Right. And we've gotten away from what it really, the functions of the church. Today I want to talk to you about the functions of the church. Lord willing, next week we'll be talking more about the purpose of the church. Hallelujah. The functions of the church. We see in Acts 2, verse 40. Let's back up, actually, to verse 36. We have Acts 2, verse 36. Peter had preached what we know as the first gospel message. And the Holy Spirit had moved in a miraculous way. So that all the different nationalities. Can you imagine that? If, like we were saying, 3,000. What if we called Penn State campus and said, have all the foreign exchange students come to church next week, please. Amen. Yeah. And yeah, we will promise you that if they come, the preacher's going to preach, and every foreign exchange student 
could hear in their own language. Oh, hallelujah. Wouldn't that be a miracle? Amen. I mean, for me to get up here and that you're sitting next to many nationalities from the Pitt State student, count, student membership, and they happen to come, and I don't know how many that would be. You know, I'm sure they would probably overfill this building. <coughs> and that if they would come, wouldn't that be pretty amazing that I get up here, and not only that, the praise and worship would maybe be in all languages so they could understand. And everyone's amazed. And as I begin to preach that everyone could understand what I'm saying in their own language. Hallelujah. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes. I mean, you'd be looking at the, the person next to you next to you from another country, and they would be looking at you and saying, you understand what he did? Everyone, and they'd be saying, how is this happening? And that's kind of what happened on the day of Pentecost. Right. It says Peter stood up with the eleven, and he proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it got their attention. Because each one understood their own language. And as symptomatic of the world even then and now, what did they say? Is that guy drunk? How is it we understand? Oh, he must be. This is only the sixth hour, so surely you don't get drunk at that time frame. So what's going on? Come on, that's the way the world thinks, right? Yes. But what did he proclaim? He proclaimed that Jesus Christ lived on this earth. And he did. Our scriptures record it. History records it. He lived on this earth. Amen. And he told them, who had many had seen the Messiah, he told them, that same Jesus who did miracles on this earth. And many of you, if I was speaking to the Jewish culture, you would say, don't you remember that day when they took the five loaves and two fishes and he somehow broke it and he fed 5,000? Don't you remember how that? Yeah, I can remember that. Don't you remember when he turned the water into wine? And you were amazed. Don't you remember when he healed the sick? Don't you? Yeah, I remember that guy. I remember him. I saw him. That was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that same Jesus that you saw perform miracles that the prophecy had proclaimed, that was the Messiah. And to the Jew, they would say their hearts would sink knowing the prophesied Messiah was here all alone. And I rejected him. Not only did I reject him, we crucified him. Yeah. And Peter says that same Messiah that you crucified, the same Lord and Savior that you remember not that many days hence, hung on the cross, everyone remembered that. Do you remember how it turned to darkness on the earth, all the earth, as he was on that cross? I remember that. He's alive. Amen. 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 See, you say amen, but what if you were one of them driving the nail onto his hands? You, you say amen, but what if you were a soldier that was beating him on the head with the crown of thorns? Would you say, praise God? Would you say, I'm a guard? I have no... I, 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 I killed the Messiah. And he's alive? What have I done? What have I done? Peter said, he's alive and he's well. Yes. yes. Amen. He's alive and well. And those scars that you created on him, he will live for an eternity buried. Amen. He is risen from the dead. Yes, he is. He is risen from the dead. And he goes on to say in verse 36. Now, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Yes. Yes. Now, when they heard this, they shouted, Amen. That's not what it says. Now, when they heard this, that same Jewish culture, same ones that had nailed him to the cross, that they knew he had risen from the dead, and they knew his grave was empty. It says that they were pricked in their hearts, cut to the heart. And they said, what must we do to be saved? What must we do? What have we done 
We're hopeless. And Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent. Yes. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. for the remission of what you've done, Amen. for the remission of your sins, for remission, for the forgiveness, for the things that you have done, you have done. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, yes. for the remission of your sins. And you, ye, shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For that promise is to you, to your children, to all those that are far off. Yes. And they responded in an amazing way. So much so that 3,000 were saved that day. 3,000 souls were saved that day. And it says also they were baptized. Can you imagine a baptismal service like that? I, I, I don't think Peter was doing all the baptizing. Man, you're like, oh, man, another one. I have a feeling that they were so excited that maybe the apostles or the 120, whatever you want, that they were baptizing people, and then those people were praising God. They said, you, hey, let's baptize you. And I could just see it, just a great wave. Of, I just see that. You ever thought about the logistics of 3,000? That's commitment. That's a service I want to be in. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Where we realize we're sinners in need of a Savior. Yes. yes. And you're hopeless. And you see the reality. The Jewish culture, culture had vividly seen the slaying of a Savior and the resurrection. And they had nailed him to the cross. But my friend, you're no different. Right. right. You're no different. You see, why did he have to go to the cross? For the Jews and the Gentiles. Right. Amen. For your sin. Right. See, you can't be saved unless you're pricked in your heart. Right. Unless you're broken. And you cry out, what must I do? It's right. not like this. It's not like, well, I feel this way. It's not like, well, so-and-so comes up here to be baptized and say, well, that's my friend, so I think I'll be baptized too. Oh, yeah, wasn't that nice? <laughs> wasn't that, wow. Picture moment. Everyone pictures. I'm going to put that on Facebook. See, look what I did. Something's wrong here. Yes. Something's wrong here. Yes. It says they were pricked in their hearts. They were broken. I could see them coming just being very emotional. Right. And say, what have I done? You proclaimed hope. The gospel is called the good news. Yes. And when they were saved, they 3,000, this wasn't fake people. These were 3,000 that were saved. Right. Amen. Who saved them? God did. Yes. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Oh, right. Yeah. It's not a charismatic preacher that's full of energy, shout, scream, getting up on the, like that and saying, hey, praise God. You're like, what did he just do? <laughs> it's not the charisma. It's the Savior. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's the Spirit. That convicts you. Right. See, the church is is a born again believers that have been convicted and surrendered life. Yes. That's the church. And they were so excited. We ought to learn what did they do? What did they do? We need to do that. Right? Right. I mean, the church today needs to be doing the same thing the church back then did. Right. That means we all got to wear robes and the invitation. No, you so they would, uh, you can get that. They would recline at the table and, and do things a little differently than we do even today. But the principles of the, the functions of the church are the same. See, they would get together at the household of God and they would, would you change that for me, Tony, please? They would practice doctrine. They would practice doctrine. Doctrine in the time of Acts was, uh, there was no written New Testament. The church of Jerusalem took in the apostles' teaching as they gathered together in Nazareth. Uh, as of Jesus of Nazareth, I'm sorry. And as the promised Jewish Messiah. The Bible was the Old Testament, and they studied it, and they supplemented by teaching Jesus Christ. The simplicity of the gospel. We today have what we know as the New Testament, 
The writings, even of Paul and to other great writers, even the churches of Asia and what have you. So we study those, even how to live. And Ephesians is written by Paul to the church at Ephesus. As we go through this study, we're going to learn about how we should live. Ephesians 4 and 5. And then we're going to learn more about the battle, Ephesians 6, that we are in. We are in a battle. You are in a battle. Yes, Amen. Are. And we're going to learn how to, how to fight that battle yes. and how to be victorious. Some of that, even how to be victorious, is by practicing the different functions to practice and learn doctrine. Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So not only are you reading the Scripture, the Scripture is very clear you're to listen to the Scripture. From people that God has called to proclaim it, your faith is grown by listening even to preaching. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your faith increases. So one thing that they did, they practiced doctrine. They got together on Sundays at, at uh, 10 o'clock and they left at by noon. <laughs> That's not what they said. And they were watching their clocks or wristwatches at, or their cell phones. No, they didn't have those things. As a matter of fact, they got together this word called daily. Yes. They got together all the time. Yes. To hear pre preaching and teaching. The apostles poured doctrine. Now, the apostles, they had PhDs, right? <laughs> no. What was Peter? What was the occupation? Fisherman. Fisherman. This fisherman, big burly Peter, stood up and somehow he, he relayed words of scripture and wisdom. How? By the power of the Holy Spirit. So Amen. you see, Amen. Acts 1 verse 8, Jesus told the disciples, you must wait in Jerusalem that you may be endued with power. Because mm -hmm. this fisherman ain't going to do it any other way mm -hmm. than by the power of the Holy Spirit. This farmer, rancher, UPS driver, whatever you want to put in there, there's no way that I can do what I do yes. except by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Otherwise, Amen. lives can't be changed. Amen. See, the church has to have power. Yes. Right. That's worth saying again because I didn't get a big response. The church has to have power. Amen. Right. Amen. Power. The power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Otherwise, we're dead. Yes. Right. There's nothing more dead than a powerless Pentecostal church. That's right. That's right. That's right. But that's okay. There's nothing more dead than a powerless Pentecostal church. Yeah, that might be an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying that about us. I'm just saying that. We need the power of God yes, amen. Yeah. Yes. to make it another day. Yes, that's right. We need the power of God to heal our bodies. Yes. We need the power of God to touch a tender child. Yes, amen. We need the power of God to make it through this crazy world. Yes. We don't want to leave and say, I've had people say to me over the years of preaching, one time this lady met me at the door and she said, that was a good job, preacher. You put on a good show. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that was an insult, really. Yes. I, I knew she meant well. Yeah. But this isn't about a show. No. Right. That'd be like a praise team and said, you know, hey, you guys sounded really good today. I like the way you sound. Only that. Nothing wrong with practicing and sounding well. But where's the spirit in it? Yes. Yes. See, we could uh, take any money we have left and we could employ some great musicians and some great other uh, people fill this plum full and make it sound like the Grand Ole Opry. But if the Holy Spirit's not in it, that's not worship. Oh, but they're singing spiritual songs, but the Holy Spirit's not in it. That's not worship. I was talking to one man even about when we was looking, I mean, we continued to look for musicians. I was talking to someone that attends another church, and I said, Yeah, we're kind of looking for musicians. And, he asked me two questions. One is, how much do you pay? And then he said, uh, I could come the next day after, after I, I play at the bars on Saturday night. I could come Sunday morning. Oh. And he plays at a church. Jeez. See, in today's world, many churches 
And man, I'm glad I feel we can be here a few hours. You ready? You know, turn off your cell phones. And but in today's world, salvation for a praise team is optional. In the midst of church world. They just want good sounding musicians. And they can live their lives however they want. Just be here Sunday morning for practice at 8.30. And uh, so we can sound good. Isn't that sad? I told this person, because he said, can I come? I said, we're not interested in that. No. Oh, we, we could get some good musicians. No. They may not be saved, but it sound really good. <laughs> hey, we need born-again believers. Amen. That know our Lord and Savior, otherwise there's no power in it. Amen. That's right. There's no power in it. See, we need doctrine. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I retired from UPS, but I still struggle with one thing that's called busy. I still keep busy. We still keep busy. And we can get so busy doing good things and never listen to the Word of God. And not be in the Word. And not listen to the Word of God. My friend, we need doctrine. Amen. Not just doctrine. We need sound doctrine. Amen. So they dwelt together and they were anxious and they loved to hear doctrine. Also, this one. Next one is they love to fellowship. They love fellowship. It says in Scripture in 2 Timothy 3, 16-17, all Scripture of um, doctrine, all Scripture is an inspiration of God that is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, for righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. Yes. That's worth reading again. All Scripture, scripture. Mm -hmm. is given by the inspiration of God. Yes. All scripture. It's profitable. For doctrine, for reproof. We need some correction. Right. Boy, that was weak. Church, we need some correction, right? Amen. We all need correction. Amen. We need correction for instruction. We need to know what to do tomorrow. The instruction in living a righteous life. That's what doctrine will do for you. Yes. The Word of God. Secondly, please, on fellowship. Fellowship. We need time together. In today's world, the word fellowship can be interpreted many things. The word fellowship is often reduced to just social activities. Uh, in the context of congregational life. While true fellowship can be manifested through social activity, the word means much more. Fellowship means much more than just getting together on Sunday morning. Yes. The Greek word kanonia signifies oneness, oneness of community, true community. Right. Jesus prayed that his followers may be as we are one. To bring up the next scripture, please. In John 17, 11, it says this. And now I am no more in the world... But these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own word, own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be two. Wait a minute, that's not what I said. You guys are listening? That we may be what? One. 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 That they may be one as we are. Yes. See, God wants the church to be one. Yes. United together. Yes. United together. Next scripture, please. In 1 John 1, 6 through 7, it says, if we say, now we say a lot of things, don't we? We say, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk just like the rest of the world in darkness, you're a liar. You're a liar. And don't practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Amen. We're to walk as one. Fellowship is about hanging out together. Fellowship is about knowing one another. It's not just coming on Sunday morning and then leaving and saying that in itself is fellowship. Fellowship is bigger than that. It's about getting to know one another. Not only the hardships, but the good times. And when you're going through, it says in Scripture, when someone's having, uh, just life is good, is great. Yes, come to church and shout glory. Life is good. God blessed me this week. Praise God. Yes. 
Or when life just uh, just stinks. Yes. Just stinks. <laughs> just isn't good. And we come in and we say, it's been a hard week. It's been a rough week. And then we come together as family. And I kind of want some of that good week person. Come on. I need to be around a good week person some weeks. You know what I'm saying? Yes. In other words, I have my tough weeks. Preachers have tough weeks too. Yes. Pastors don't always wake up in a good mood. Ooh, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> don't ask my wife about that one. Though. Pastors aren't always on top of the world. Then how do you come in uh, full of joy and energy and excited of even standing up here this morning? Because I have a risen Savior. Amen. Amen. And no matter what I faced out there, I need reminded yes. of who He is. Yes. And I need to praise His holy name. I, I need a brother like Bob who's 80 years old singing victory in Jesus. Yes. In my life. I need that. Yes. That, just, that just blesses my soul. I, Alice is not here this morning. I miss her very much. Yes. Oh, yeah. On and on and on. Alice meets us. She's here when we're doing praise and worship practice. She comes in. Yes. Oh, yes. And you'll watch her over there. and She's just swinging away. Just yes. praising away while we're practicing. <laughs> and as soon as I come down, she gets up like this and passed her. Uh, and we gave each other a big hug every Sunday. I miss that right now. Right. Maybe she's online watching. Sis, I miss you. See, that's fellowship. It's not just clock in, clock out. If we are a church, why do we do meet and greet? Why does that church go and do meet and greet? Because you need to know you over here need to meet some people over here. That's right. You know what? If we are a church that we've seen people come to church for 10 years and still don't know their name. Shame on you. That's right. I don't know that person. You know, it's that guy or that girl that sits over in that. I know where they sit. I don't know their name, but they, no, yeah, they've been coming for like 10 years. I just don't know who they are. <laughs> Shame on you. It's true. We do mean greet to get you off your duffs yes. and go meet some new people. <laughs> Not just the same old person you sit by every Sunday. <clears throat> That's fellowship. Amen. That's fellowship. What I'm wanting is our praise team is, is a fam very close family. I want that spread. Yes. I want you. When Sister Maxine, she was a little bit late this morning. This is online. I'll tell all of you right now. I? And last week her goats got out. Yes. And we're eating her flowers. So she came in and said, I'm sorry, but the goats were my flowers. Okay? <laughs> this week she was a little bit late. And then we said, did the goats get out again? She says, no. My alarm didn't go off like I thought. <laughs> or something like that, right? But if we don't have fellowship, we don't even know that. <clears throat> See, if we, don't, if we don't get to know each other, there's people in this room that you might know. It's been here for a while. And, you know, where it says in Scripture in Galatians chapter 6, we're to bear each other's burdens. That's right. That's right. Well, how do you bear about goats if I never know about the goats? <laughs> bear each other's burdens. But, you know, the sis has got to carry her own load, it says in Galatians 6. So the goats are there. She's got to deal with them. But, hey, we're praying for you and the goats, right? <laughs> we laugh because... That's the way fellowship is supposed to be. Yes. Like my brother comes in this morning and says, it's my birthday, I'm 80 years old. Hallelujah. And we get around him when we were just singing, praising before you guys ever got here. Yes. We prayed for him. We sang together. We just having church before church ever started. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's fellowship. That's yes. right. Amen. If I never knew each other, see, if you stay away, you're robbing people from that. You're robbing people from that. See, church isn't just about clocking in and going back and saying, well, I did my duty. No. no. One is doctrine. Another one is fellowship. That's right. You know, one of the saddest things I heard is when people come and visit a church and nobody 
shakes their hand. Yes. No one says a word to them. And they walk out, go home, and say, guess what they're going to say? Oh, I'm coming back next week. No, they aren't. No. They're going to say, that's the most unloving people. Oh, the music sounded good. The preacher even stood up on a pew. It was pretty amazing. They're going to say, that's the most unloving church I've ever been to. Let that never be this church. That's the thing I stand against the most. It's not the sinner who has a problem. It's the saint who doesn't love people. That's right. Amen. That's right. Right? But that's okay. Are those us in the back of that girl? That's not the sinner that has a problem. It's the saint that don't love the people. That's right. That's right. You can write that down. It's not even on my notes. It's the truth. The Lord's Supper. They got together to practice the Lord's Supper. We here at this church, we like to practice the round of once a month. Or more, or sometimes a little less. We will not love practicing the Lord's Supper, because you know why? It says even on the table we bring up, this do a remembrance of me. And we need reminded of that sacrifice. Shame on churches that only do it once a year at that. We need reminded of a Lord's sacrifice. We need to be reminded of his death burial and resurrection yes. and Amen. praise our Lord and Savior. Yes. We need reminded and continue. Yes. We need doctrine. Yes. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Yes. We need fellowship Amen. about knowing about one another, even the goats when they get out, things yes. like that. We need to know that. Yes. See, I know you do a good daycare, right? Did you know that? Everyone should 